knighting ceremonies coming up this week. I'm really nervous about it. What if some people recognize me? And then they come here and hurt all these people. I'm supposed to be in hiding. But now I'm expected to get up in front of numerous people and make my presence known? I don't know. I don't like it. I feel anxious. To try and combat some of these feelings, I have built a house outside of the kingdom where I can hide. And if they find me, it won't affect anybody else. I've also taken up meditation instead of some of my trainings to try and work on my inner strength and not so much the outer strength. It's given me a lot of time to sit and reflect and think back on some of the things I've done, choices I've made. Like I remember when I completed some of my training, the monk gifted me my mother's sword. It was the sharpest thing I've ever held. And I just remember the shiny black metal of the blade. It just felt so appealing to have a blade that matched my personality so much. And for years I used it for my training, even on a couple jobs. And I didn't take care of it. And one day, it broke. And I'd like to have that back. Thinking back on it now, when it broke, I feel like a part of me broke with it. It's the only thing I had for my mom. And now, I'm just here alone in this world. I've tried to replace that sword with this diamond one I have, but no matter what I do to this one, it just never feels the same as that one did. And I don't even know what it was made of. Sharpness aside, I feel like I just missed the connection. I see all the other seraphs walking around here with friends, family, and all that, and I'm jealous. I've never had that. I've spent a bunch of time in these caves, just looking through all the different metals I can find, trying to figure out if any of them could make what that sword was made of, and I come up with nothing. I think tomorrow I'm going to start doing some research to see if I can find out who my parents were. I know we have a pretty good library here, so I'm hoping something will come up. If not, We'll look somewhere else. I couldn't wait till morning. The not knowing was keeping me awake. So I figured the easiest place to look was going to be the castle library. Pretty sure that's where they keep all the history of Seraph stuff. But it would still be a book. No. What you looking for? Oh. Um, nothing. What are what are you looking for? I am trying to figure out some stuff about Stratus and Seraph history. Oh. Okay. Um, well, good luck with that. Let me know if you need any help. Um bye. Okay, well. Good luck with your thing. What a weirdo. So I began my research. I read through just about every book in here. Can't find anything about people that might even be my parents. It doesn't help that I don't know their names. Like I was like four when they died. Somehow... I've got to get that information before I even can figure out where to look. I hate to do it, but I might have to go home. Like, I don't know if people are still there waiting for me, but the books in this library aren't telling me what I need to know. There's a lot of stuff about past dealings with other kingdoms, 
stuff like that, but nothing that pertains to me. There's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't pertain to anything, and a lot of pages that just don't have anything on them. We have a night's meeting later today, and I think after that, I'm going to make the journey home and hopefully make it back before this weekend's knighting ceremony. Not finding anything in those books has been a little disheartening, but I don't know what I really expected. Like, I, I can't go to sleep, and so I'm just going to sit out here and wait for this meeting to start. It's kind of peaceful, but I don't know. It also feels a little ominous to me. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why do people look at me the way that they look at me? And what was Cirrus doing? Like, from what I could tell, she was looking at medical books. But like, she seems fine. I mean, she's acting weirder than normal, but... I mean, like, people do that, right? I don't know. It feels sus. I don't know what to make of it right now. But I think maybe before this meeting, we could sneak in a little snoop session and see what we can come up with. Find out what Cirrus is hiding. Serifs. These conditions are typically caused by environmental factors, physical vulnerabilities, or natural biological processes. The feather flu. That's what I thought I had. Feather flu is a highly contagious illness that affects the wings and respiratory system of serifs. It is analogous to the human influenza virus, but specifically targets the unique physiologic physiology of serifs. Sneezing and coughing, check. Fever and chills, check. Loss of wing strength and temporary inability to fly, check. Feather loss or discoloration, not yet, but the only thing that I don't have with the feather flu is that it would be contagious. I've had this for a while and nobody else seems to be catching it. Wing mites, no. Silver spine, <laughs> no. Serif allergies, maybe, but probably not. Ember pox, small fiery lesions, no, definitely not. None of these even make sense. Conclusion, serifs typically possess extraordinary resilience and strength. They are not invulnerable to common ailments that can impact their well-being. Awareness and proper treatments of these conditions are crucial to maintaining the health and vitality of these winged beings. Ongoing research and the development of specialized remedies continue to improve the management and prevention of these illnesses, ensuring that serifs can continue to fulfill their roles without undue suffering. Well, I have had undue suffering. I've been sick for what feels like years. My wings hurt. I've got a fever that doesn't seem to want to go away. I'm coughing and sneezing and sniffling, and it's getting to the point where I can't hide it anymore, and I just want to know what's wrong with me. Oh, she is sick. That's not something I can be worried about right now. I got my own problems, like this night's meeting. Talk about babysitting duties. Because apparently Amora has been getting everybody into trouble. So, we gotta talk about it. Yeah, well, I come here every day for the office, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, the photos. Oh, yeah. Sarah <laughs> <laughs> sent me those uh, when she was out helping look for the mermaids. Yeah. And they were too, too cute not to post. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
as most of you know, we are gathering today to have a meeting about Amora. Um, so Estelle, if you want to kind of tell what's been going on. Yes, so um, a lot of you probably noticed that Amora is a very, very, very free spirit. And has a keen interest in the minds and science mm -hmm. experiments. And particularly doing this either on her own or trying to partake in these dangerous science experiments herself. So, oh, I just wanted to talk to everyone and let them all know what's what's like what's going on and like what we would like Amora to be doing from now on. Cause I cannot take waking up and seeing her covered in burns and bandages anymore. I'm going to go grab a book so I can record minutes. I'll be oh, right back. Good idea. Okay. Um. Yeah, so we're gonna kind of get this guess the, you know, allowed to be with. Um, did you did you make that? I did. I did. Okay, good. I good, have good. a list I can good. read off of. I've only recorded people that she's allowed to be alone with, so like without the presence of a guard, and then mm -hmm. people that okay. she absolutely has to have like a guard with her. Good like, idea. I'm talking about with these people, you have to be, like, on alert. Right. And, yeah, if, and Jonah, if I uh, miss anyone that you want to add, just feel free to tell me. Okay. Okay. So, people Amora can be alone around. Obviously, we have, we have Rain. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Knights. And then right. I was also... Thinking Princess Ira and uh, Captain and Prince Max. I know them, and I personally trust them. I don't feel like they would do anything to harm Amora and would, in fact, try to keep her safe. I and mean, we also, yeah. Initially, I mean, initially at the Knights Guild meeting, they had a hard time keeping track of Lucida, but I think they should be fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping so. That's at the very least. Like, I don't mind. Um, like, if I hear that, like, Max was looking after, like, Amora for, like, a couple of minutes, I'll be like, okay, that that's that's fine, you know? It's not like, I'll, I don't think I'll get, like, upset if I heard that he was looking right, after got her, it. you know? Mm -hmm. All right, got it. Okay, then we also have Advisor Quinn, uh, Umiko, Charlotte, and Theo. I trust those people. Obviously, Theo's All like right. a brother to me, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have Marina. Yes, and, and Marina. Um, and then we have people Amora should not be alone around, and everyone should be like on high alert when they are around. Obviously, we have High Lady Morgan and Advisor Fang, although I haven't heard much from Fang over the years, so I don't think he's much of an issue anymore, I hope. They say he's looking for someone, but I think he's doing a shite job at it. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's... It's been years, so... It's been uh, five years and you couldn't find someone that... Yeah, never mind. Yeah, we're, we're not yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no. Um, anyway, continue, stuff. Okay. This might come as a shock to some of you guys that don't know, but Horizon is also on this list. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Because... Um... Do you want to tell them, or should I just move on? Um, we'll, we'll we'll update them later with yeah, whatever we'll, happens. Let's, let's go through the list and stuff first, and then we can give uh, an update on the okay. horizon situation. Then we also have... I'm really sad to say this, but Avis currently, mm -hmm. um, with some stuff that I have heard that Avis is going through, I do not think at the moment they should be allowed around Amora. Especially since the that her dress got burnt while with Avis in the cave mm -hmm. and some other things. And then last but not least, we have a new mermaid in the Mermaid Kingdom that Marina warned us about called oh. like Scalia or Skyla? Sk Skyla or something. Sk I'm not too good with her name. I don't either. She, she's a siren. 
Yes, so she's so. a siren, has admitted to killing a bunch of people. I would just like to keep Amora away from that for now. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. who I have listed. Anyone else that is not on the list currently is like I don't have an opinion of, so I can't place them in either bracket. But I would still say be even if they're like not on the the list, they'll be, mm. you know, cautious. Around just them anymore. Can just can I can I add one? Uh yes. To which section? Uh to people I think will be okay alone with mm -hmm. her. Uh Captain Aiden. Oh yeah. I was just was, about to say that. Yeah. He, I, I was just about to say watch that. Yeah. Her with uh <laughs> when she was with Marina. I'm just gonna add that. Mm-hmm. To my mental notes, because I don't actually, I'm not actually holding anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Well. Speaking of, I think it'd be good to bring in someone to kind of go over duties, because we want to assign someone to Amora full time, uh, but where their main priority is to watch her. So, um, I have a guest speaker. Hello there. Oh, Captain Aiden. Oh. Nice to see you. Yeah. See I you thought I heard someone walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apologies. Come on in, take a chair. Take a seat. Or stand or wherever. Yeah. Here, Aiden. Oh, okay. Work still. Mm I am. Okay. First of all, I appreciate uh, being offered to come here to the meeting. I know I'm not part of the kingdom, but I still want to try to get my two cents in if I can. So, obviously, since Samora was staying with us for a short time and she was kind of under my charge, un unofficially, I guess, unofficially, I don't even want to go about it, but um, I do think that there are some. You know, obviously with her going in the mines and her science experiments, there's definitely lots of dangers there that need to be addressed and be handled a lot more carefully. For instance, with the whole science thing, like her having like lava and magma blocks, those things are incredibly dangerous. For, and I don't know how she's got her hands on them. But those things more or less not going to be, need to be confiscated as soon as possible. Any mm -hmm. other and any other dangerous items she may have in her room or inventory or whatever just needs to be removed. Yes, I recently had uh, taken away her flint and steel and her lava bucket that she had on her. She had a flint and steel. Yes. Oh dear God. Let's let's at least good that you did that. But I think I think she still can do science stuff, but definitely needs to be a lot more restrictive of what it can be. Mm -hmm. Agrees control. to a point where it's at least it's safe safer things. So less of the fire, but other signs should be fine. Yeah, as long as it's within, as long as it's within reason and it's safe. Right. If it's something right. Within, like with like a lava or anything like that, no, that just cannot be allowed whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Anything and... taking damage wise, no. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. No. Like what? Uh, what if? What if she's not the one taking damage, but a test? Uh, but she employs a test subject to I do the still... uh, to Ugh, take the damage. That's. I don't feel it should be a good idea, even though I will admit I was one at one point. But I that was not not a good idea. It's just not. Well, well I guess that, that make that makes two of us at some point then. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I still you know. But I mean, if she, she wants to test things that are safe on other people, that's that should be fine. But just nothing dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Even if we're even yeah. if we can be fine from it, it still could give her incentive to try on herself. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Which is kind of shown entertain her with different activities because Marina had mentioned um, how I think whenever was it she was little that um, they would take her on you know different adventures to kind of give mm -hmm. her stuff to do give her um, learn about different parts of the kingdom or other kingdoms or you know when you go on play dates or safe experiments that we come up safe activities mm -hmm. just something a more controlled mm -hmm. environment. We don't want them to go mining alone. 
or I'm, at all really but <laughs> yeah um permission to speak on that actually um mm -hmm. and I, how we talked about yes yeah, yesterday about it um maybe the idea is maybe getting her like maybe a room or something with like some all, your own blocks you can put in there so she can mine so mm -hmm. that way she doesn't actually have to go into the mines but she can still do some mining in a, in a controlled environment mm -hmm. so will we bring like up the ores for her spot. yeah maybe i bring up the ores for her so she can mine because I was been told that she mines just one block, and if say someone here telepasses to her, that mm -hmm. could be a disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could just tell her to mine two blocks up. That well. is true, but the, even then, again, the mines are not safe. Even with the mobs being, you know, where they are right now, it's there's so mm -hmm. many other dangers there that could, you know, hurt her or somebody else. Yeah. So uh, definitely a controlled environment would probably be best um and having someone with her at all times someone on mm -hmm. the list or the guard assigned to her maybe we can make like a like a small cave or something or find something like that that if we already scout out light up then we can just yeah. fill that with ores every once in a while and we can make it look cool too so it looks like an actual mm -hmm. cave for her it's like a like a simulation yeah yeah that works you have a custom cave for her yeah. Mm -hmm. Somewhere safe with water and no fire. No fire, yes. no lava. No fire, no lava. Well lit. No drop offs. Well, luckily I mean, she will be okay with drop offs. Yep. Yeah. Drop offs um, are yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, you know that but I. But you never know what could be down below, to be fair. That's why. That's, why that's, she more. that's true. Only when you know, but yeah. Another idea I potentially had that could keep her preoccupied is while I know she is still young, I feel like another thing we could do is maybe also get her started on her heiress training mm. and maybe get like not, not, not full on, but like little things because she's already very, very good clever for her age and i feel like maybe that extra stimulation could help her mm -hmm. yeah because um going to school once a week i feel like she could use maybe more um mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't have to be anything like crazy just no just like know, little learning. little things yeah I, that's a good idea mm -hmm. anything to keep her occupied distracted she goes yeah. to bed at night <laughs> yeah i think That's at some point idea. you probably have to come up with a timetable of what she does on a daily basis whether that be having her own time or whether that whether she should be doing heiress training or whether she should be at school then once you set that timetable then we could all just follow mm -hmm. hmm. yeah after the meeting I needed to buy some time for everybody to disperse so that nobody could see me leave the kingdom. I don't know if I'm allowed to yet or what, but I need my own answers for my own questions. And so I've got to go home. It's a long journey. We can make it. There it is. I haven't been here in years, but... I need answers, so here we go. I've sat up here for hours, haven't seen any movement anywhere around the place, so I'm hoping we'll be safe. If not, I guess we'll do what we have to do. Time sure has not been good on this place. Wow. Let's see if we can get in. Of course, the front door's locked. But, I can sneak around the back, I think. Aside from the cobwebs, this place is exactly the way I left it. Things have grown a little, but the house is the same. I knew it'd be dark, so... I brought my own lights. 
Hopefully having a light on in here isn't going to send any signals to people in the village. The last thing I need is people getting the drop on me here. There's been enough bad stuff happen in this house. I don't need any more. I just got to figure out where to look. See if I can find anything that could tell me who my family is, parents' names, any of it. The old man's room. Seems like if there's going to be anything, this would be the place it would be. Check these books. It's got a bunch of journals, but nothing that I feel like would be the right time period. Maybe this chest has got something under the bed. Ew. Webs everywhere, though. Let's get rid of those. Give me the creeps. Let's check the chest. Oh. This might be what I need. This looks like the same metal that sword was made of. But where did he get it? Like, was this my mom's too? Or was this just his? I know he loved a garden, but like... A hoe made from this stuff seems excessive. There's a book in this chest too that I'm thinking might be a good place to start. So I'm going to sit, read for a while, keep my ears open so nobody sneaks up on me. And hopefully get some answers. I desperately need them right now. I'm losing my mind. Oh, here we go. May 17th. The Altair family had always been good to me, so when I seen the smoke coming from their house, I panicked. Grabbed a bucket and ran down the hill. Something terrible had happened there. Ooh, this might be it. My mind told me it was nothing. Maybe a small cooking fire they would have had handled when I arrived. But my heart knew something was wrong. I arrived at the house to see the front door open. The smoke was less than I had seen from my house. So I knocked on the open door. No reply. So I stepped in and noticed smoldering hay in the kitchen. My heart sank. This wasn't an accident. Someone's trying to burn the house down. But why? I stomped on the embers and made my way through the house slowly. When I reached the back room, it all made sense. On the floor, I seen Helena and Aeolus. Helena was wrapped in Aeolus' lifeless wings. Her glow and tiny flames were all gone. They were both gone. I had to find Alice. Surely whoever did this wouldn't harm the child as well. I started frantically searching the room for him. I soon found him, shaking behind the chair in the corner of the room. His family had nobody. In the few years they'd lived here, I hadn't seen a single visitor that wasn't from this area. Who would take this boy? For now, it would have to be me. So I scooped him up and ran to report what I had found. May 20th. Atlas and I have had a few days to adjust. He cries at night, but that's to be expected, I suppose. He's awfully clumsy as well, knocking all kinds of things over with his wings. But he's a very sweet, loving little guy. Huh. Ah, uh, things change. Wow. Well, I've got names. What? What is that description of my mom? And what is this hoe made of? I need my sword back. I need my mom's sword back. Well, I think I got what I need. If not, come back. It seems decently safe here, but I gotta get back to Stratus or I will not make it in time for the knighting ceremony. So, I'll sit here for a minute and collect my thoughts and then be on my way. Kinda miss this place, but. I know if I come back, they're just gonna find me. I got home late last night, but we did make it. So, now we gotta prep for a knighting ceremony. Probably the most anxious I've felt in a very long time. 
but I've got a fancy new uniform to wear. The blue just kind of clashes with the soul, you know? But it's okay. Learning to put my pride aside is part of this journey. Before the thing, Princess Rain gave us a rundown of what was going to happen. Where we'd have to be, up in front of everybody, of course, but it's fine. Everybody give their speech, and then, boom, we'd be knighted. Feels like a relatively simple thing for a position that's supposed to hold some importance. But, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it. Everybody's decided to wait next to the Waystone to greet our visitors. But I... I need to be somewhere that I see them before they see me. Just in case bad people show up. Because you never know who's coming to this thing. So I've perched myself up high on the church. Hoping that everybody will try to you know, mingle down in the courtyard before they come to the church. And I'll have plenty of time to sit up here and suss out who everybody is. So the last thing I need is to get caught in a lie or be exposed in front of all these people or have somebody try to kill me and then have to show who I am by not letting them. I don't know. It's a lot of pressure for me. But, we'll get through it. People have absolutely seen me standing on the roof of the church. So now I've moved. Found a different building to linger on the roof of. But it gives me just as good of a vantage point. I can see them all down there, running around, carefree. All with connections. Something tethering them to this place. Must be nice. Everybody started filing into the church, and I couldn't help but notice some of the Matherian people. They had a glow. They had a little fires. It made me think of the old man's book. I just can't imagine my mom could be one of them. It just doesn't add up with the history books I've read. Seraphs and the Netherians just haven't got along in so long that I can't picture that. But maybe that's why we didn't live here. Like if my mom's a Netherian and my dad's a Seraph, do I fit in both places? Or am I the outcast again? Or do I have to choose? It's like I, I'd rather not. But I guess we'll see. All right, as we usher in a new generation under the era of the silver lining, I just would like to make sure that everyone understands how high of an honor this day is for all of us here in Stratus. Uh, my brother is not only our captain, but also somebody that I hold very near and dear to my heart and watching him go through all of the hard work that it takes to get these featherlings to where they are today has been an absolute honor. And I hope you join me in honoring and welcoming him up to the stage as he presents our featherlings for this ceremony today. Nimbus Stormwind, come on up. Um. Nimbus, if you're talking, we can't hear you. This is a great Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Just, uh, what was it? Gathering my thoughts here. Uh, thank you very much, Cyrus, for the introduction. Of course. I hope everyone's doing well. The life of a Seraph is a short one, in the grand sense of time. Many come and go, but the impact they leave is eternal. Their hearts and principles can inspire others to take a step in being better individuals. When I joined the kingdom as a knight five and a half years ago, I, would, I wouldn't know what a knight does. Someone told to stand guard wherever, whenever. Somewhat true. 
But a knight is more than their sword and armor. It is what they stand for that makes the most impact in their duties. Being a good example to the citizens, protecting the ones in need, holding yourself to a higher standard, and being the atlas that shoulders the weight of a nation. But most importantly, a knight provides a simple thing. Hope. Hope to those they care the most. If the events of the past five years have taught us anything, it's that life is turbulent. Over that time, we have lost friends. We have lost family. Some of us even lost a part of ourselves. Those kind of moments bring us to our darkest, darkest moments. Gray clouds start to form and hope seems lost. And there seems to be no way out of the dark. But all it takes is for someone to be there for you and spot the silver linings of hope. Though small, can make a huge difference in winning and losing, living and dying. Knights can be strong individually, but together as a unit, they can tackle even the most monumental of disasters and provide hope for those they love, care, and live for. That's the true meaning of a knight, standing up for what is right, what is fair, and what is just, and showing those around reasons to hope for a better world. Today, I'm proud to officiate my first two graduate recruits of the Silver Lining, who have fought tooth, nail, and wing to become official knights of Stratus. They have not only proved themselves individually strong, but can be there for one another as a team. Lads, I am immensely proud of you. I enjoyed every bit of our training together and saw both of you grow not just into good knights, but into great seraphs. I know that both of you will carry that title and your character with the utmost pride and respect and in return, inspire others too. The chapter ends here, but our journey has only just begun, and I look forward to being a part of that for years to come. Without further ado, I'd like to call for Her Highness Princess Rain. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of the event. Today we gather in celebration of a mo monumentous occasion, marking the transition of our featherlings into the ranks of winged sentinels, guardians of the sky. This ceremony is not only a tribute to their growth and achievements, but also an acknowledgement of the honor and responsibility they are about to embrace. As Featherlings, you have learned the art of flight, the wisdoms of the skies, and the strength of unity. Now you stand on the threshold of a new chapter, ready to rise to this new role. This transition is more than a title. It is a testament to your dedication, courage, and the unwavering commitment to the protection and prosperity of our kingdom. To be a winged sentinel means upholding the values of bravery, integrity, and vigilance. You are protectors of our realms, entrusted with the sacred duty of guarding Stratus from any threats that may look on the horizon. Holden Windward and Atlas Altair, please step forward. Today we honor your unwavering loyalty and exemplary courage. Amongst the clouds of Stratus, honor is our guiding star, and you have embodied this ideal with every step you have taken and will continue to make. As you rise to the title of Wing Sentinel, remember that true knighthood lies in steadfast dedication and the noble heart that guides your actions. May your service inspire others and uphold the virtues that bind us together. Uh, I knight the official knight of Stratus, Holden Windward, and Atlas Altair. You guys may continue standing or take your seat, whichever you prefer. In this new role, may you always find the courage to face adversity, the wisdom to lead with compassion, and the strength to uphold the values we cherish. Your journey from Featherlings to Winged Sentinels is a beacon of hope and a promise of a brighter, safer future for all of Stratus. Congratulations to each of you. May your wings carry you far and your spirits remain unyielding. Embrace this achievement with honor and let your service be a shining example for all who follow. After the ceremony, I took back to the rooftops. I've learned that large groups of people 
especially ones I'm not super familiar with yet, tend to make my anxiety flare up. And if I don't have to subject myself to that, then why would I? So I sit on the roofs, live vicariously through all the people down there on the ground. They live so carefree. They just let it loose, and they know how to have a good time. Me? Just always on edge. I can't remember the last time. Even, like, in the Kingdom Spa. I can't remember the last time that I was at peace. I've always got a million thoughts rushing through my head. What thoughts are they having? You know, what free drink? should I go get? Who am I going to hang out with? What kind of shenanigans are we going to get into? Those aren't thoughts I have. My thoughts are who's going to come through the waystone? Who's going to climb over the wall behind us? It's not normal. But I guess that's why I'm a knight now. Do I think coming down here and partaking in the drinkage is the best for my anxiety and paranoia? No. Will it help me blend in? Maybe. But who knows? Maybe they'll see right through it. Best thing I can do is pretend I'm having fun. And... Maybe over time, I actually will. But at this moment, this isn't fun. This is a lot of people. It's a lot of people I don't know. I don't trust these people. How do I know that the minute they leave here, they're not going to notify the people looking for me that I'm here? I can't know that. Also just can't stop thinking about the old man's book like I don't know who killed my parents well am I ever gonna know but also why does it have anything to do with what's going on in the current world like my mom being Netherian my dad being a seraph is that why they were killed like, am I going to be killed when they find out that I'm both? I, I don't... I don't understand. But what I do know is learning this information has caused me to have more questions than answers. And I kind of expected it. But it, I don't know. It sits funny in the stomach, you know? Like, I need to find a Netherian that's going to keep it honest with me. Being a, well, of Seraph appearance, I don't know if that's going to be a thing. I don't know if any of them will even want to talk to me. But, hopefully, I can track one of them down. Because I have a lot of questions. And I need answers. I've started this quest... And I intend to finish it. 